I'm Tori and today I'm going to be reviewing The Cricket in Times Square and Tucker's Countryside written by George Selden. So these are children's books with amazing illustrations by Garth Williams. For anyone who's unfamiliar with Garth Williams, he also illustrated like the Laura Ingalls Wilder Little House books and lots of other great children's books. And his illustrations are just so cuddly and adorable. I love them. So when I was a kid, I when I was like really little, I loved the um, Cricket in Times Square movie that was a Christmas movie. I would watch that constantly. And I know I read at least this book when I was little. I'm not sure if I read this one or not. It didn't sound familiar. I so, But I was pretty little. I was young enough that I couldn't read yet and my mom was reading them to me. So it was a long time ago. So this is the first time I've read these in quite a few years. These books tell the story of Chester Cricket. A cricket from the um, Nantucket countryside who finds himself in the New York Times Square subway station and he's you know because he's a cricket he thinks he won't do very well there until he meets Tucker Mouse and Harry Cat who live there. This book is such a love letter to New York kind of and it takes place in a subway station that you'd think would be you know, most people think of it as fairly grungy and unpleasant, but it's just so charming. And these animals have such a good time. They collect, they have plenty of food to eat and they collect treasures and things that people have left behind there. It's so much fun. And something that makes um, Chester a special cricket is that he can play music on his wings, you know, as crickets chirp, but he can play, listen to human music and then repeat it. So what happens is Chester ends up getting adopted by Mario, a young boy whose family owns a newspaper stand. And it's so cute to see, you know, the family's little newspaper stand and Mario working there and taking care of Chester. And then um, Tucker and Harry will come visit him once the humans leave. And this is just such a sweet story and it's so much fun. So then Tucker's Countryside is, um, takes place after the first book and, um, you know, the adventures in New York have happened and um, Chester has gone back to live where in Nantucket and one day Harry and Tucker hear, get word that something terrible is about to happen to the meadow where Chester lives and they need to go there and try to save the meadow. And so the first book was kind of a love letter to New York. This is a love letter to the sweet little bits of countryside that are in between houses and that you still get there. And it's so fun to see all the different little animals who live in this countryside. So the best thing to me about these books are the characters. Um, Chester is, you know, he is kind of like the main character in the first book and he's kind of like the point of view character. He's inquisitive and fun and likes to play music and he's definitely fun. But my favorite characters are Tucker Mouse and Harry Cat and they are just so cute together. They have the best personalities and then and they interact so well with each other. So Tucker is very much, he's very expressive and melodramatic and flamboyant and he's, everything is life or death and he loves to scrounge and collect things that humans have lost and he's very over the top. And then Harry is the sarcastic one who just sits and kind of watches it and he gets to enjoy everything and he kind of it feels like he thinks that he has his own personal entertainer in there and he loves watching how much Tucker will panic and be over the top and occasionally he'll calm him down. Especially in the second book, you know, Tucker will just be over the top and running around and panicked. And so then Harry will just reach out because he's a cat, he's much larger, and he'll just put his paw on top of Tucker and pin him down until he calms down and say, okay, Mousykin, it's time to calm down a little bit. And he actually uses the word mousykins. And they're so cute. And um, in both the books, but especially in the second book, I get the feeling that they are, like, it's a children's book from the 60s, so it doesn't say, but I feel like, in my head, they are a couple because they act just like an old married couple who have been a part of each other's lives forever. And they just, 
they annoy each other a little bit, but they really, really love each other, and they're so cute, and they interact so well together. And, you know, Tucker and Harry have such different personalities that just go so well together, and I love seeing them, and they're just so cute. So this series goes on. I think there are like six or seven books in the series, maybe. Um, these are the only two that um, I've had these two since I was a child. I don't know if I read the second one or not. I definitely read the first one. But I am looking forward to continuing the series. I've ordered the next one, and it's just so cute. I really recommend this. It's so adorable. The characters are so great. I love just watching them interact, watching the way they interact with humans and with each other. And it's just the sweetest little story. I highly recommend it.